Hello everyone, Yanni Plays here, and today we are looking at the second part of our Replay Mod tutorial. Now, if you need to know how to install Replay Mod, please watch the first video. I will put the link at the top right here, or it's also down in the description. And the second tutorial, we will look into the settings, then record a scene, set up all the camera angles, and then I'm going to show you how to render that with FFmpeg, and also how to get FFmpeg onto your computer. Now, I'm not going into every single detail in here, but I'm going to give you a broad overview on how to use the replay mode so that you can go ahead and start recording your epic time-lapse videos. Now, I'm recording this video on August 1st, and I have very good news for you because today, replay mode released for 1.17 and 1.17.1. So you don't have to go through the VIP Patreon process anymore that I showed you in the first video. So you can go directly and for free download your replay mod. But like I said, if you need help installing it, please go and watch the first video. So now that you have Minecraft started up, you're going to see this new little icon over here, the replay viewer. And if you click on it, then it is going to show you all of the replays that you already recorded. And you can see the oldest one are at the bottom, newest one are on top. In the top right, you can go into the settings. And in the settings, you can turn on and off a whole bunch of different things. Now, I'm not going to talk about all of them. I just want to point out a couple things. First of all, recording indicator, I turned that to off. So when you record, then in the top left, it is going to tell you that you record. But that also means that when you want to use your in-game footage in a video, you're going to have that annoying overlay saying that you are recording. So that's why I turned that off. Then I also turn off the automatic recording because I don't want replay mods to record every time when I start up Minecraft and when I start playing. Uh, you also can turn off the chat. A lot of people turn off the chat. So if your server is really busy and a lot is going on, you may want to turn this one off. Now let's go ahead and record our first scene. Now, as you saw, I turned off the automatic start in the settings. So that means I have to go into the game menu and click start recording. And once I hit start recording, you can see at the bottom left, the chat window says that the recording started. So now I just go ahead and build something. All right, once you are completed with your scene, you have two options. You can pause the recording. Uh, so for example, if you need to go and get more resources, or if you, uh, for example, want to go to the other side of the river and build a dock over there, you can pause the recording. Or in my case, I am going to stop the recording here. Now I'm going to disconnect from the server and you can see that my uh, replay mod file now is being saved. So, and if we go into the replay viewer, you now can see the new recording. So the newest recording is always on the top and the oldest one are at the bottom. So you can see I did an eight minute and seven second recording here. Now, if you click on one of them, you can do a few different things. Of course, you can delete it. Let's go ahead and delete this 24 second one here or you also can go ahead and rename it. You also can edit the file. So that would mean that you can insert some cuts or cut the end out or put a split in it. Now to record the camera path, let's click on load. Now, when you start up, you are inside of your skin. And of course you can just fly out like if you will be in spectator mode and move the camera all around. Now on a screen, you can see a lot of clickable fields. And if you want to gain control over your mouse, all you have to do is click the letter T on your keyboard, T for Tango. That gives you control over your mouse. If you want to go back into the camera flying mode, all you have to do is click escape. And now we can move our camera around again. Now in here, you can see two different timelines. On the top, we have those eight minutes that we just recorded. And then in the bottom is what is going to be our output. Up on the top left, you also see a speed. Now this speed here only affects the playback speed. So if I set that at four, for example, and I click on pause, then you can see I am moving four times as fast as I did. Now at the bottom is where we are going to have our output. So when we set our position keyframes, so the position for the camera and our time keyframes, then we can 
determine how long the scene is going to be. So for example, if we are having uh, this one here is currently at 30 seconds. So if we are going to set one keyframe here for the time at 30 seconds, and then we are going to set another one at, let's say one minute. And down here, the distance in between is just going to be 15 seconds. Then that means that the replay is being sped up two times. So if we would set one time frame all the way at the beginning and one all the way at the end after eight minutes, and we would set it here the time to one minute, that means that our eight minute scene would play within one minute. But let's go ahead and start recording our very first scene. So now we were able to see where I'm starting to build. And since I am going to build on a whole length, I'm going to pull the camera out a little bit so that we can see everything. I'm hitting T and now I am going to add the first position keyframe. So that means the camera is going to start here and I am also going to add the first time keyframe. Now, as you can see, I slowly start building into the other direction. So now we can move the camera over into this side of the build so that we can see a little bit more over there. So all we have to do is hit escape to get back into our camera mode and we can move away. Now, as you can see, the first camera location is now already on. And once we're going to set the second one, you are actually going to see the camera pad or this one here. I'm trying to go a little bit lower. And I'm hitting T again so that I get control over my mouse again. So now we're ready to set our second location and time keyframe. So as you can see, we started around 30 seconds and now we're about 1 minute and 20 seconds. So that means 50 seconds of build time elapsed so far. So now we have to find out, well, how much time do we want the camera to show those 50 seconds? As of right now, it will be set to 12 seconds, but I think we can actually cut that down to maybe five seconds. So I'm putting the timer to five seconds and I am going to add my position keyframe. So that means after five seconds, the camera moves all the way from the left over here. So that's going to be a fairly fast moving camera. And we're also going to add our time keyframe because I want that the time from zero seconds to five seconds is going to show everything in the 30 seconds to one minute, 20 seconds. Now, when I do time lapse videos, I'm trying to not speed up and slow down the time a lot. So that means my next time frame I would like to have at two minutes and 10 seconds. And then we are going to go to the 10 second mark. So let's let the time elapse until we are at two minutes and 10 seconds. So now we have about another 50 seconds in between those two time frames. So that means my next timestamp I'm going to set at 10 seconds. So I add the time key. And now I want to find out where I'm going to place my camera. So for this one here, since we already have a fairly fast moving camera here, I'm trying to keep it in a faster pace. I'm also going to move again quite a good distance over here. Let's leave it about here. So I'm pressing T again to get my mouse back. And now I'm going to add my camera position keyframe. Now, when we're moving back, now you can see that this straight line that we had here now slowly start to curve and is going up here. So when you set the position, it is always trying to smooth out the camera angle as much as possible. And actually, when we're going to set our next location, I will go over here somewhere so that you can see how nicely it is going to curve over. But be careful if you are very close to buildings and you set, let's say, one camera position here and then you set your next one maybe somewhere over here, it most likely will clip through the building. So plan out your camera path and make sure that you're not running through buildings. 
Now, if you want to run through buildings, so for example, you do an exterior build and then you go into the interior. See if you can go through maybe through a door into the building or if you can go through a window into the building. That is just making it look much better than when you just clip right through a wall. So again, we have another 50 seconds in between. Now we're going from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. I'm adding my time keyframe and now I'm going to position the camera. And I just positioned the other camera. And now you can see that our curve is swooping back again and we are looking straight down. So next, let's try a little bit different of camera control. So as you remember up here, I always let 50 seconds elapse. And then down here, I used five seconds in between each of them. And I wasn't doing that just because those numbers sounded good. No, I did that because 50 seconds is five seconds down here. So that means if I want to make uh, some quick camera adjustments. So what I will need if I want to, for example, roll the camera down this roof here, then what I can do is I can go to 21 seconds and let 10 seconds elapse up here. So let's do that really quick. So we set that at 357. So now we have 10 seconds elapsed up here. So that means down here, I want to go to 21 seconds now. And in 21 seconds, we add our time. And now let's roll the camera. To roll the camera, all you have to do is use L to roll it clockwise, or you can use J to roll it counterclockwise. If you quickly want to reset the tilt, you just hit K. So let's roll it over. And also if you roll it, so for example, let's roll all the way upside down. Now the camera control is still the same as before. So if I hit the space bar, I'm going towards the sky. And if I'm hitting control, I am going down. So nothing changes in that. So, but let's just go over a little bit. Let's roll the camera and let's go down a little bit. Make sure that I'm not clipping. Perfect, and I am adding another position keyframe. So I'm going to elapse another 10 seconds here. Gonna roll it even more, and we are going down closer to the ground. Up here, again, we are going to 22 seconds, and we add the position and the time keyframe. Let's get another 10 seconds in can go down even more, but we are slowly starting to roll back. We set it to 24 seconds, add a position and another time. Now, if you want to replay this camera pad, you are just going to drag the marker all the way to the beginning and hit the play button. Now, as you could see, that was not a very good replay because half of the time the player wasn't really in a picture, but I just wanted to show you how to set up a camera pad and how to control a few different things. So I didn't really pay attention on to the building itself. Now that we are done, we are going to render our camera pad. Now, the very first time that you render, you actually have to tell the replay mod where your render engine is. So let's go ahead and install that really quick. So what we have to do is we have to download FFmpeg and for that we go to ffmpeg.org. As always, links are going to be in the description. So let's go and click on download and now we have to select what operation system that we have. Now, if you select Windows, you can see that there are going to be multiple links and by the time you watch this video, those links may be different. So currently we have two different links. I'm going to open both of them. If you go onto the first one, the codex page, you just have to scroll down just a little bit and then you can find the most current version and a few different links to download. So if we go into the mirror link, 
and it's bringing us to github and now we can see all the different versions that we can download now all you need is the essential build so you can download either the zip file or you can download the full download if you clicked on a second link, it also brings you directly to the GitHub page, but now you have to find your operating system and find the correct one in here. Once it is downloaded, we drag it onto our desktop. Now, once you have it on your desktop, find a good place on where you would like to extract that. Once you found your folder, you hold your right mouse button, drag it over and then extract in there. So now that it is extracted, let's do a couple things to make sure that we're not running into any issues. So first of all, let's open it up, take this file here and move it back to the location where you just opened it up. So now that's done. Let's go ahead and change the name and shorten it down so that we remove all the extra letters at the end. The reason why we're doing that is because otherwise the file name is too long and you cannot integrate it into replay mod. So now open it up and go into the bin and inside of the bin you find ffmpeg.exe. Right click on it and go into the properties. And now here you find your location. So all you have to do is mark it, control C to copy it and we are going back into Minecraft. So now back in the replay mod, in the video settings, we are scrolling all the way to the bottom. And then you see this field here, and all you have to do is delete everything out of this field. And then hit Ctrl V. So that is going to add this FFmpeg location. And then all you have to do is add backsplash, and then ffmpeg.exe. So now that FFmpeg is added and replay mod knows where the render engine is, we could go ahead and render this scene. So, but before we render, let's do a couple more things. So of course, up here in the video settings, you can change the settings to whatever you need. You can change your bitrate, you can uh, change the output, and you can also change the file name so that you know exactly what file it is. But maybe you also want to add some shaders. So all we have to do is hit escape and go into the options. And in the video settings, we can add our shaders. Now, as you can see, I currently don't have any shaders installed because I'm currently uh, working on a video on how to install shaders. So I'm just going to leave it on off. And since I'm also not going to change anything else in the video settings, we can go ahead and render this short scene. So now, as you can see, we are rendering the scene and it's going to take uh, about another minute and 30 seconds to render everything. If you want to see a preview on how it renders everything, you can click on it. But as you can see in the bottom right corner, the time jumps up quite a bit. So if you don't want to see a preview, just leave it off. So your rendering is going quite a bit faster. So let's wait until it's finished rendered so we can take a look at the final product. And once the rendering is completed, you're going to hear this beautiful sound here and you are seeing this window here where you can either open the video in the folder or you can directly upload it to YouTube. Now, we're not going to do any of that because usually we are going to edit our final product and add a few more things. So that's why I'm just going to click on close here and show you where in the Minecraft folder you can find this replay. So if you go into your .minecraft folder, you can see that you now have a replay recording and replay videos. In recording, you have the raw data and you have all the recording data. And over in replay videos, you can see your final rendered scenes. So as you can see, it is opening up the player where we can watch our scene. And I want to just take those quick 20 seconds to say thank you to everybody that watches the videos and especially the ones that put nice comments like this one here down as a brand new YouTuber. Things like that, comments like that really make my day and I really appreciate you watching my video and leaving such nice comments. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I see you at the next video. Thank you and goodbye.